In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith of the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches in Cumbria. I'm going to give a reflection on the readings of the 30th Sunday of the year in the Catholic cycle. I do ask you to, if you can, to read those readings, either from a missal or from uh, uh, the circulated leaflets that we have circulated in our Kent Estuary churches. I won't go through those readings to save time. Later on, and I will be celebrating the Mass of Sunday in which I give a briefer version of these thoughts. As to the readings, uh, the first one uh, reminds us that uh, you're to be very practical in your faith. It, our Christianity is not a theory or a nice idea detached from reality. It's looking after the weaker people. The second reading from St Paul um, gives some details of what happened to his new converts, how they developed when they came to a belief in Christ and knew his love in their lives. Very interesting to instruct ourselves. And finally, our Lord uh, gives that uh, reading from the Gospel of Matthew. And it's the one that, on love, you must love God with your whole heart and your neighbour as yourself. I'll come to that in more detail. Again, I, I leave the, a pondering on those readings to yourself. Maybe you'll get other things out that I have missed. Jesus says the greatest commandment is the dual law of love. Love God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind. And also love your neighbour as yourself. And if you come to think of it, it means that Christianity is a down, downright hard bit of work. You're never off duty. It's a way of life. It touches every part of life. Love. In practice, we have to accept that we do not always live up to these standards of love set by our Lord. So for most of us, our work is in, uh, our faith is a sort of work in progress, progressing in love. In the Lake District, the South Lakes at the moment, we've got many, many roadworks that they seem to go on forever. I think that describes the soul that seeks God. We're work in progress. And we should not feel down at all by this limitation. And, but we should not either lie back and do nothing about it. The readings enlarge on the meaning of love in practice. And we will see that wholehearted love, which results in being a person who actively seeks God, and actively serves neighbour. Um, probably it implies that if our faith has no earthly effect upon us and other people, probably it's no heavenly good either. So let's take the reading separately and see what we can come up with. Um, the first bit, love God with one's whole heart, whole mind, whole soul. Jesus says Christianity involves a love of God which is both head and heart. We need constantly to develop our faith. We can't say, oh no, I'm not learning anymore. But we've also got to try more and more to make that journey from a head faith to a heartfelt faith, head to heart. 
the result should be a soul love. The love for God deep in our very being. Not in, where, where faith becomes not a nominal duty or a superficial thing or a lukewarm thing. I suppose we should be a bit like the stick of Blackpool Rock. Uh, the word Christian love should be imprinted through everything we are and everything we do in our lives. And St Paul tells us what this could mean. Uh, he gives the example of his recently converted converts conver uh, from paganism mainly uh, in the town of Thessalonica. And he says, this is how they changed when they learnt about the love of God for them, how they responded. First of all, they imitated the Lord. They wanted to know the Lord personally and follow him in what he expected to do, expected them to do. And it raises a question with ourselves, is God really a living person to us who we consult in our daily life? That's the heart of Christianity. They experience the joy of the Holy Spirit. Joy is a product, by the way. It results from allowing the Holy Spirit into our lives to take charge. It means handing over ultimate control to the Holy Spirit and becoming channels of that Spirit into this world. It's really handing over our lives. So our love would lead us to do this. Love of God. We ask ourselves with Pope Francis, have we honestly prayed for a release of the Holy Spirit promised to us in baptism and confirmation? But the result of this handing over to God is a deep sense of trust and purpose in our lives. We do gain, but that's another sign of loving God, handing over. And finally, they broke with idolatry. In, for idolatry, we don't only mean worshipping uh, pagan gods. We mean breaking with all the habits and substitutes for God in which we put our security and hope. This can include uh, the way we can idolise or worship ourselves or make the pursuit of wealth, power, control of others the centre of life or even the pursuit of pleasure as a centre of life. Note in all of this uh, a certain sense of independence, of responsibility and finding innocent pleasure is good. That's not the point. What's wrong is making these the centre of life, idolising them and pushing out God. That's the sort of response we should be making if we want to show love of God. Now to love of neighbour. Our neighbour is, of course, anybody who we come into contact with. And the Gospel says, Love neighbour as yourself. We're to treat them as we would treat ourselves. That's the first problem. I doubt if I do that. But I'm still working on it with God's help. And the other sort of practical love of neighbour is outlined in the first reading from the Old Testament, very ancient, but still valid. It can include various things. Don't oppress strangers. No anti-foreigner stuff. What about migrants? Secondly, don't be harsh to widows. Uh, widows symbolise the most vulnerable people in society. We should be gentle in our judgement of the weak and vulnerable. 
don't play the usurer and return the cloak. That's a rather odd one. This means give to others the basic standard of living. The cloak was the day cover and the bedtime cover of a poor man. To deprive a poor person of their bedclothes was to deprive them of a basic standard of living. So we must look to maintaining at least a basic standard for dignity in others. That's love in action. So in our parish families of the Cantestri Catholic Churches, uh, we're in the process, a bit delayed because of the COVID, of course, of what we call divine renovation, with the slogan from maintenance to mission. We're looking out, outwards, towards our neighbour. We are also deepening our relationship with Christ and with the Holy Spirit. We're trying to make the journey from head to heart. It's exciting but daunting. We try more and more to be what God wants us to be. So we pray with a verse that you'll find in the Alleluia chorus just before the Gospel. Open our hearts, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Our prayer might be, Lord, Empowered by the Holy Spirit, may we strive to be the open-hearted, generous, loving people you want us to be. Confident in our faith, confident in our faith, and filled with the joy that the Holy Spirit brings. Amen. Our parish mass from... The Church of Our Lady of Lords in Arnside uh, will be published or broadcasted tomorrow before the 11 o'clock mark on Sunday. God bless you and keep you. Mm -hmm.